everyone. Uh, I hope you give yourself a chance to try these two problems. So maybe you want to pause the video right now and try multiplying these two things. And once you're ready, you can start it up again and I'll show you how to do it. Or if not, maybe you're just listening along, I'm going to show you how to multiply these two binomials right now. So to begin, I want to talk about two different methods. And you might like one better than the other. I don't care which one you use. They're both really going to do the same thing. It's just really how we think about it. The first method is referred to as FOIL. And FOIL stands for first, outside, inside, last. And that's just a reminder of how many things we need to multiply. So first means we're going to multiply the x and the x because they are the first terms in those binomials. That would get us x squared. Outside means we're going to multiply the outside terms. So 2 and x would get us 2x. Inside would mean to multiply the negative 3 and x, which gives us negative 3x. And then the last would be the negative 3 times the 2, which gets negative 6. And then we want to combine like terms, so in this case, that's our two middle terms here, which leaves us with x squared minus x minus 6. So that's the answer to that one. So when we say to FOIL something, we're really asking you to multiply it. Some of you may have done another method called the box method, and that's just thinking of finding the area of something. So here's a rectangle, and to find the area, we would multiply the length times the height, or the width, however you want to refer to this. So I'm going to make the length of this rectangle 2x plus 1, and I'm going to make its height 3x plus 2. That's really just four multiplication problems in one again. So 3x times 2x is really just 6x squared. Let me go over how I got that. 3 times 2 gets you 6, and x times x gets you x squared. So in the end, we get 6x squared. This box right here, we would be multiplying 1 times 3x, right? This, this side right here is really 3x as well. So that box would be 3x. This box would be 4x and this box would be 2. Now let's combine our like terms here. We get 6x squared. These are like terms. They add up to 7x. And then we have the plus 2. So there's our reminder about how to multiply. Factoring. Factoring is really undoing multiplication. So in this first example, think of this as the answer to the problems that we were just doing. And I want to go backwards. What could those two binomials be to multiply to x squared plus 5x plus 6? Well, let's think. To get x squared, right here we'd have to have x and x. To go right here and here, we would need numbers that multiply to the 6. Let's list those out. What multiplies to 6? 1 times 6, 2 times 3. Ooh, don't forget this one. Negative 1 times negative 6, and negative 2 times negative 3, right? Negative times negative is positive. So which of those is going to be the right one? Well, I think it all depends on this term right here. We want to get something that gets, uh, adds up to negative, sorry, we want something that adds up to 5x. So whatever number goes here gets multiplied with x, whatever number goes here gets multiplied with x, and then those are like terms, they're going to get added together. So we're really looking at this list, and we want to see which of these numbers add up to 5. So which of these add to 5? 1 plus 6 is 7. Nope. 2 plus 3, that adds to 5. Negative 1 plus negative 6, that's negative 7. And negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5. Only one of these options works. So I'm going to fill it in up here.
And if you wanted to check and see if that was factored correctly, all we would have to do is multiplication. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. 2 times x is 2x. That makes a total of 5x. And 2 times 3 is 6. So this is the correct factorization of that expression. Let's try this one a little bit faster. If I were to factor this, what would need to go in the first spaces to get x squared? What gets us x squared? x times x. Let's make a list of the things that multiply to 20. 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. Also, negative 1 times negative 20 negative 2 times negative 10, and negative 4 times negative 5. So we're multiplying to 20, but we want to add to negative 9. Notice that negative right with a 9 up there. Which of these in the list add up to negative 9? Nope. Nope. Oop, that's positive 9. Close. Nope. Nope. Ah, there it is. So we have our factors of x minus 4 and x minus 5. And again, if you want to know if you got it right, do the multiplication and see if you get x squared minus 9x plus 20. Here are some weird ones. Notice something's missing on both of these. x squared, something with x is missing on this one, then minus 4. If you want to rewrite it, we could rewrite it as x squared minus 0x minus 4. Let's try that. Okay, we got x and x. That gets us x squared. What multiplies to negative 4? 1 times negative 4. Negative 1 times positive 4. 2 times negative 2. I think I got them all. Which of these things add to zero. Nope. Nope. Yep. So I'd get x plus 2 and x minus 2. This one's a little bit different. Something is missing, but not the same as the one we just did. This looks like it's missing plus zero at the end. So now we want to multiply to zero and add to 6. What numbers multiply to 0? Well, any number times 0 is 0. So as long as our numbers add up to 6 and one of them is a 0, I think we'll, we'll have a winner. So let's see. Something plus 0 to get me 6. We want the two numbers to add up to 6. Well, that would be 6. Does 6 times 0 get us 0? Yeah, it does. So we have our two numbers, x plus 6 and x plus 0. But what's x plus 0? x plus 0 would just be x. So we could also write it as x plus 6 times x. But most people would write that in front here. This one also might be familiar. I'm going back to the original problem here. Here's the factored answer. This has a GCF of x, which we'll talk about later. 